This is part three of unit one notes for AP US history. And as you can see from the board, uh, this section is going to talk about the institution of slavery and how slavery first got started in America. And as you can see by the top of, of the slide here, slavery builds an empire. One of the important things to remember is America would not have been able to have been built and would not have taken off as easily as it did uh, without slavery. Slavery is really what provides the labor for the early colonists to survive and later on thrive and become uh, the colonies uh, that later on declare their independence from England. Without slavery we don't get to that point more than likely because we needed uh, labor and slaves are what uh, provided that labor. So let's talk a little bit about slavery and how it got here. So let's start off talking about the history of slavery. And the first thing that you probably uh, know from your other uh, history classes again and from uh, Sunday school is that history is not, the history of slavery, slavery is not something new. Slavery has been around for, uh, <coughs> excuse me, thousands of years. It's in the Bible. Um, it was very custom for uh, people to enslave other people uh, like when they conquered them and things like that. But what had been happening is increasingly um, people in Europe had become squeamish about enslaving people like them. Um, they for whatever reason started to think it was immoral to s enslave other white Christians. So they needed to find non-Christians, people uh, that weren't like them, that didn't believe them, and for whatever reason in their mind it was okay to do that. That wasn't a sin, that wasn't immoral, uh, just the enslavering white Christians was immoral. And so for the new world they had to start finding new sources um, f to fill the role slaves had played in their traditional societies because uh, now slavery of white Christians was seen as wrong, immoral. I'm going to go to H-E double hockey sticks for that. Okay. Now what did you need slaves for? Well the, the demand really glue, uh, grew out of the plantations or those huge farms that were started uh, in, in the New World. And sometimes we think of the New World and we think of just the 13 colonies. The New World is the whole pretty much Western Hemisphere including North and South America. And so these plantations are in South America, the Caribbean, Central America, and of course the colonies as well. But that's what they needed slaves for. They needed uh, labor to do this because again they didn't have modern technology uh, to do it. They needed physical labor and that's what they needed them for. Interesting enough we first uh, tried using Native Americans or Indians as slaves and think a minute as to why that probably didn't work out so well. And you should come really to the conclusion is what did we know happened to many Native Americans? Well they contracted European diseases and died so they were very unreliable. So then they tried something called indentured servants. Indentured servants were uh, white people that <coughs> came over to the New World to work. And the agreement basically was, uh, I will pay as a, as a landowner, I'll pay your way over and then you agree to work for me for a certain amount of years to pay off that debt and then you're free. And for some white people that was their only ticket. That was the only way they could get here. They had no other option or maybe they were trying to escape trouble back in Europe. Um, so that's the second phase. Indians didn't work. Let's try using this system of head, uh, indentured service. The system was called the head right system because basically um, to encourage uh, people to bring settlers over here because they knew how important it was to get labor. If I was a landowner and I brought uh, an indentured servant over, I would usually get about 50 acres of land for every person I brought over. So that was a big incentive for me to pay to get these people over because not only did I get labor, but I got free land in exchange as well. And that's called the head right system and that encouraged a lot of people to send for indentured servants. The problem is indentured servants um, often left really quickly when they got here. They didn't like the life, it was too hard and so they often f uh, ran away um, because they didn't like being uh, a, a servant, in, in essence a slave. And it was easy for them to do that. They could blend right in. You wouldn't know who was uh, a former indentured servant or not. And so that's kind of what led then um, to them to find another source. They had to try uh, 
a different route because these indentured servants weren't working out either. And that's really why they went to Africa. Uh, not only were these people easy to conquer and to enslave, um, especially as you can see here with the help of other Africans, but once they got to America, you knew if you were black, you were a slave. There wasn't no free black people roaming around. That was very, very exceptional. So it would be easier to keep track of these people. There'd be nowhere for them to run to or, or anything like that. <coughs> and remember, these people too are going to be in a foreign land. They're going to speak a different language. It's going to be very easy to keep them separate. Now, if you look in page 96 in your book, it tells you um, a couple of things. One, it tells you where a lot of the slaves were coming from. And believe it or not, uh, that's what's called West Africa is where most of the slaves were come from. That's the part of Africa that was agricultural. And so they had some ideas of, uh, you know, crops and planting and things like that. And the other thing is it does, it tells you a little bit about uh, how slaves were captured or rounded up. And this was often done by other Africans, usually rival tribes. Uh, would try to eliminate their competition. They would make uh, contact with the Europeans and agree to help supply them with slaves because then in exchange they often would get guns uh, and they would get rid of some of their rivals. And so uh, if you were a tribe in Africa, this is one way where you could expand your territory and power by getting guns and also eliminating some of your rivals. And so that's kind of what it talks about on page 96 in your book. I'm also in class going to show you some <coughs> video clips about how slaves were captured and uh, what the transport was like and these types of things. And our first movie night is going to talk about this as well, which is coming up where we come in and watch movies. We'll talk a little bit more about the transportation from uh, slaves from Africa to the New World. Um, so once they started um, doing that, it's estimated that 10 to 20, excuse me, 10 to 12 million Africans were stolen from their homes and forced to the New World, which is an extremely high number. So you can tell right off how high in demand the labor was. They needed lots of people to do the things that they were planning on doing, and Africa is where they got many of them. Something that we want to correct here is only a small percentage of the slaves actually went to the 13 colonies. As you can see on the slide here, only one out of 20. Most of the other ones go to uh, plantations in the Caribbean or South America. Not very many of them actually end up in the 13 colonies. Uh, but the ones that do are used on these um, big farms again. And uh, what crop you're growing kind of depends where you are. Uh, if you're, you're <coughs> excuse me, growing rice, you're farther south, particularly the Carolinas. Uh, tobacco is in the middle colonies again, Virginia, Maryland region, and indigo farther south too as well. So those are the primary crops that they're being used for. So that's uh, why slaves were needed and, and why they came from Africa. Um, let's continue then and talk a little bit about what it was to be a slave. Now one of the things that I'm assigning you is the autobiography of Frederick Douglass, who was a former slave that talks a little bit about what it was like to be a slave. And again, you'll get some sense of this in the movie we're going to watch on the Extra Credit Movie Night. But let's just talk about some, some basic things. As one of the things you can certainly understand is that becoming a slave would be a tremendous shock to you. And if you look on the chart on page 98 in your book, it helps explain, goes through some examples of this. But you're being ripped from your homeland. Uh, you don't know why. Um, you're often being captured in the middle of the night, so you're confused. And people around you uh, are from different tribes. They often don't make sense to you as well. And your captors look very foreign. They put you on a ship uh, and, and they take you to a new land. It's just a total disorientation process. And that's what we mean by the shock of enslavement. It's a, it's a harsh emotional roller coaster is what I'm telling you, which I think you can understand pretty easily. Um, a term here that you need to be familiar with is something called the triangle trade. Basically, what that is referring to is the trade of slaves kind of formed a triangle. It would start, one tip of the triangle would be in Europe, because uh, that's where the slavers would start from, and they would leave Europe with things like either gold or weapons, and they would take that to Africa. And then they would trade the gold or weapons uh, to the other tribesmen or uh, slavers, they were often called. Um, 
for the slaves themselves. So that's the second part of the triangle. Then the slaves were taken to the new world and often then you would have rum or the tobacco or uh, the uh, other crops that were grown and that would be shipped back to Europe. Then they would take those products, sell them and then pick up gold and weapons again and start the process all over. So you had the three points of the triangle and that's referred to the triangle trade. So if you come across that you need to know a little bit about that and in particular you need to know it refers to um, <coughs> the, the transportation of slaves. And the, if you ever come across something called the middle passage, the middle part of that uh, triangle is the passage from, um, from uh, Africa to North America or the New World. That's called the middle passage because it's in the middle of the process. And you'll see a lot of examples of that uh, in the video I'll show you in the clips and in the movie night uh, as well. But you can imagine this is a very ugly process. They, they, they packed a lot of these slaves under deck. Um, oftentimes they would pack so many in that they couldn't, uh, they'd get halfway th over there and they couldn't uh, keep all the slaves alive. So sometimes the slaves were killed or thrown overboard so that some of them would survive. Um, and again, there's people getting seasick. You're packed in on top of each other. It smells bad. Uh, all kinds of things. And again, you'll get a, a, a clear understanding of this when you see the clips in class. Um, one of the after effects of slavery on Africa itself is that it weakened Africa. Uh, it took a lot of the, the populace away from Africa and that made Africa itself easier to conquer, which is going to happen primarily in the uh, 18 and 1900s. And so that's kind of an afterthought or an after effect, but it's an interesting point to keep in mind that slavery not only affected um, North America, but it affected other parts of the world, in, in particular Africa. It left them open to um, conquest. Remember, imperialism means stronger countries conquering or colonizing weaker ones. So what is it like to be a slave? Again, reading the autobiography of Frederick Douglass will help us out a lot with that. Uh, but some typical things. And, and one thing I, I want to mention is no slave experience was exactly the same. Everybody had different masters and different masters had different rules uh, and, and what you did depended on where region of the country you are, your age, all a variety of different things. So we can't say that all slaves had exactly these characteristics or their lives are like this. Um, but here are some generalizations. Most of the slaves are going to be field workers. That's what you're there for. You're on a plantation because we have this tobacco, we have the rice or, or whatever the crop might be. We need to clear fields, we need to plant, we need to harvest, and we need physical labor because we don't have machines yet at this time to do that. Most of them are going to be field hands. Some are going to be, uh, uh, you know, people that, domestic servants, people that do laundry, cook, clean, these kinds of things. Um, but most of them are going to do that. Some will be specialized, they'll be blacksmiths or, or those kind of things, but most of them are going to be field hands. You're going to be provided with just the basic necessities of life. You're going to have a small one, two room dwelling that's not very fancy, often doesn't keep out the cold or uh, is really, really hot in the summertime, just the basics. You're going to have just a few amount of clothes, just enough to keep you, you know, functional. Uh, a food, you're not going to have a ton of that. You're going to have just about enough to keep you going. You're going to get a little tiny bit of land to maybe grow a little bit extra uh, food in a garden, but that's about it. You're going to get just the basic necessities to keep you going. Okay? They're going to try, most Africans are going to try to keep some semblance of their heritage where they're from. This is especially early on, uh, whether that be religion. Uh, a, lot, a lot of them would keep, try to keep a lot of their religious beliefs alive um, through music and dance and those kinds of things. Some would hold on tightly to their names. Um, so different little snippets of their, their heritage of where they're from would be something that most slaves were desperate to do. They want to have some side of sense of identity of home and where they come from and their life before they're slaves. And <coughs> One of the things that's going to happen and evolve over time is um, slave revolt or slaves killing white people and, and trying to run away is going to be a constant fear in the South. Um, 
Remember we, we talked about things like Bacon's Rebellion? Well, when Bacon's Rebellion happened, that put up the idea in a lot of uh, plantation owners and, and wealthier white people that slaves could revolt. They could, could uh, get weapons and organize and plan. And so they instituted slave co codes or what were common called, commonly called black codes. These are laws or rules that limited the freedom of blacks. For example, blacks were not allowed to read. Blacks were not allowed to form organizations. They didn't have black churches and these kinds of things because they were afraid that if they did that, blacks would begin to um, plan and orchestrate these rebellions or revolts. And again, a lot of that comes from the idea of, of Bacon's Rebellion in particular because Bacon's Rebellion was sort of uh, the common people rebelling against the rich because the common people thought the, the government, which was run by the rich in their mind, and, and pretty much was, weren't doing enough to help the common people. And, and so they took up arms and, and they revolted. And when the rich people saw that, they became quite fr frightened of that. And so they instituted a lot of these to kind of uh, keep the blacks in line. Now we'll learn about a couple of slave rebellions uh, as we go through the different periods here. Um, one of the most famous was the early one, uh, and this is one of the most successful as well, is the Stono Rebellion where slaves in the Carolinas tried to uh, run away and get south to Florida, which was owned by Spain at this time, which was a little bit uh, more lenient on this. They were trying to flee the English colonies. And they were f somewhat successful. They got part of the way, uh, but it was fairly organized and that kind of stuff. And these rebellions are really going to scare people even further in the south. And whenever that happens, they get more tight with their regulations and rules. And so Stono Rebellion, you need to know what it is. It's, it's a slave rebellion that was fairly successful, but also know it led to more fear of slaves revolting. So to kind of summarize here, uh, again, it was largely due to slavery that the colonies became wealthy and enjoyed a very high standard of living. If you came to the Americas and you were white, you could generally make something of yourself. Land was available. If you worked hard uh, and were industrious, you could gain wealth and movement up the social lander. But a lot of that was due to slaves. Without slaves, a lot of that's not possible because we don't have the labor necessary to develop and, and use the land and, and really take advantage of the resources. So that's kind of just to summarize here a little bit. And that'll end um, this part of the notes. And we'll go on from there.